Obviously, Ambrose, we're uh, experiencing inflation here in the United States, and we seem to have been living on borrowed time because the dollar is linked to oil. Are you yep. saying that the euro doesn't look like it's going to be a viable option for the OPEC countries to move to? Do you see us undocking the dollar from oil, or do you see that as a, an impossibility with the currencies the way they are right now? Well, look, there's been a huge kind of swing into into the euro as a world reserve currency. Central banks have um, mass, there's been a massive portfolio shift from the dollar into the euro, especially. But actually, it's sort of stabilized now. It's continued to go up a little bit in the last year or so, but that's only because the euro has risen in value against the dollar. But there actually hasn't been net fresh money been going across. So I think it's kind of stabilized. I, I don't see... I don't see any evidence of that. It's going to reach a level where it's going to really challenge the dollar. And I suspect that the difficulties inside the eurozone are going to become apparent relatively soon to, to everybody. It's known to, it's known to a small circle. You've already got there's a fund called the European Divergence Fund, which has been set up in New York, I believe, where they're already trading the differences between the, the bonds in Italy and Spain and Portugal and Greece, the so-called pigs countries, the four, those four countries, and the uh, and German bunds. You're already getting, I know that some of the investment banks like BNP Paribas and others here in Germany's, France's largest bank, has advised clients to, to start shorting the, the bonds of the southern countries and then go along the um, bonds of the northern countries and play the spread. So this is beginning to enter the market and it's become a specialized trade. It's a niche thing that people talk about in bars here in London and, and uh, in Frankfurt. It's not yet become a general widespread perception. I don't think that the um, fund managers in the Middle East and in China and so forth have really quite cottoned onto this yet. But then I think there's going to be some clear evidence of a, of a crisis. You know, what's happening in Spain right now is, compl- is quite dramatic. We're beginning to see the breakdown of the government over this. You know, the, the property market is disintegrating. We've just had the, the government come through with a, with, with a set of emergency uh, fiscal stimulus measures the finance minister has refused to endorse them. So you've got, you've got the, the Spanish the headlines on the Spanish press every day is, you know, the government at war with itself, you know, and it's quite an extraordinary situation. We're not that far from a point when this becomes, goes mega politically and everybody can see, oh, my God, we've got a major, major problem. The Eurozone is beginning to tear itself apart. I mean, will it happen, you know, in the next six months? I don't know. Will it will it will it be clear within a year? I think it will be. Yes. And then I think talk about people switching to euro for pricing of oil or as the challenging the dollar for preeminent status as the world's reserve currency, I think is going to fade. I'll be quite honest with you. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of known here as a Eurosceptic. I spent five years in Brussels as the Europe correspondent, sort of working in the belly of the beast. I have very strong views about this. I believe that the euro was not created for economic purposes. It was created for political purposes. And the experts within the European Commission, the economists, warned that it would not work as it was currently constructed. And they were overruled, essentially, by the political the leaders of this drive because they saw the euro as the way to create a fully integrated European superstate, in, in essence, or a much more closely integrated state. They saw it as the, as the great catalyst that would force the, uh, Europe probably through a stages of crisis. If it led to a crisis, fine, because that would then force Europe to create the institutions needed to get them out of the crisis, which would then be a kind of European treasury and a European economic government. And through that mechanism, you create a genuinely federal Europe, somewhat along the lines of the, the United States. Do you think the current crisis that may be happening right now with the dollar and then, as you have pointed out, in Europe, do you think that that will precipitate these new institutions to come in and actually turn into a a single government in Europe? Is that what they're looking for? No, no, it won't. The problem is when they sort of launched the euro back in 92, the Maastricht Treaty, and then 